for those of you who have not met me personally, it's just a picture of me. Um, my name is Ludovic Marcatino. I'm the managing partner here at FFR Trading. Um, that's a picture at the Washington uh, in the Mayfair District of Central London. It's really a beautiful property. It was built, I think, in 1913 by King Edward. And it's all Art Deco, so I love this place. It's not too far from uh, if you want to visit the Queen. So we're not that far away. Um, and uh, I'm kind of like the spokesperson for the company because I speak a few languages and uh, I like to travel. Uh, although this last trip, I had my flight delayed. I just got back, I think, what, two weeks ago from Madrid. In fact, I see quite a number of the uh, attendees at the Economic Traders Summit that we held at the Palace uh, Hotel. Uh, thanks for joining. I know it's uh, very late there, so I appreciate your support. And I've been hearing some good things on utilizing uh, the new Tease Up strategy by Mr. Joseph Duffy. Um, yeah, we hold uh, trader summits all over the world. In fact, um, uh, the last one was done on the 28th of December. I actually stayed uh, till the 3rd or the 4th of January. It was really nice. Uh, for those of you who have never been to Madrid, we're probably going to be doing like a little bit of a reunion. Uh, in the last week, I think, I think of August, it's really brutally hot in Madrid, but we had such a overwhelming response uh, and successful uh, economic summit that we're going to probably do a reunion in about six months or seven months time. They say it gets a little cool, you know, and I talked to some of the people at the Palace Resort. Yeah, you've got to go to the Palace uh, Hotel, excuse me, it's not a resort, but a hotel. I mean, it's a beautiful, beautiful property. It was built in 1912 by King Alfonso the 13th, and he, he actually had 10,000 men, artisans, uh, artists, uh, concrete, marble specialists from all over Europe build this uh, fabulous hotel. And the hotel was specifically to hold his guests uh, for his marriage, and he was able to get that done in 18 months. So that was another special place. And it's right in the center of Old Madrid, so across the street is the Museum de uh, Prada. Prado, I should say, uh, that uh, promotes and features uh, Francisca Goya paintings. And uh, right next door on the other side of the hotel, you have the Reina Sofia, which was uh, showing the um, like Pablo Picasso artwork and also uh, um, who's the guy with the big mustache and the one foot long uh, cigarette holder. Uh, you know who I'm talking about. Um, for those of you, almost all of you know who we are. In fact, we're doing this webinar for the benefit of the existing subscribers. And um, just to review, we've been doing this since 2006, so we're not neophytes. We're very good at evaluating trading systems, investment strategies. So whatever you're interested, whether it's the Forex futures, stock, options, commodities, we're going to be going over uh, spread option trading, using credit, debit, and even diagonal spreads, which has been very successful by Mr. Joseph Duffy. And one of the things that helped us succeed uh, in this rough, tough business and stand out and dominate the industry is that we put together an eight-step certification process, which has a lot of built-in checks and balances for investing any kind of, or evaluating any kind of trading strategy. And uh, that uh, certification process, once it's complete, uh, it helps you a lot. And we work with traders and developers that are very successful, long track records. Uh, they have specialities in different market sectors. Um, I just want to go over quickly because uh, there was a couple of questions like, what do you mean by this eight-step certification process? One of the reasons is you're subscribing and joined us as a client is because of this. And just two key out of the eight that are really important is one, we want to see that the developer of the trading system has at least 10, 15 years of experience. Uh, most and all of the uh, developers that we do work with have at least 20 and in some cases 35 years experience. Uh, we just want to make sure that they have the proper uh, background, track record. And also uh, what's unique is on this eight-step certification process is that we verify that the developer is trading their own capital uh, by two or three independent brokerages that are uh, fully licensed in either London or uh, the United States and Canada. Uh, so that's the eight-step certification process. Um, the acronym that we use for the Target Zone Options Program is TZOP, and we're going to be introducing Mr. Joseph Duffy. We're going to go over the trading academics uh, for you, many of you who are already using the system. I want to go over the performance statistics since it was started on this tracker account. Uh, we're going to break down how we enter the trade. Uh, we're going to actually review a couple of trade alerts and how uh, 
uh, we manage or how Joseph manages the risk, uh, what uh, signals and how he exits a position. Uh, we'll actually look at a live trade alert, uh, recap, and then uh, review some of the educational components of the, of the service. Uh, Joe is a prolific writer. These are just a couple of the uh, uh, papers and books that he's written, some of them bestsellers. Uh, many of you have already read some of the books and uh, had some very positive comments about that. Uh, he continues to write and uh, uh, with what papers and books. Um, this is how we break down the actual trade. They're actually traded in units, of what we call a unit of 10,000. So what we did, or what I did, is I took uh, Joseph Duffy's target zone options uh, performance summary, the tease up strategy, and you can see that all the trades are based on a one unit 10,000 account. You'll see that each trade alert, they'll allocate $1,000 per alert. Uh, bullish trades are initiated as put spreads. Bearish trades are initiated as call spreads. So if you look below the heading, you'll see that there's three columns of data uh, starting from the left going to the right. So let's look at the left-hand column, which gives the summary of that particular one unit um, allotment. And you'll see that the total net profit on that $10,000 is 82,000. That's right. 800. Over 800% return. I know it's insane, right? Uh, one of the things that's unusual about this, and this is uh, uh, the first time I've seen it in my professional career, and I graduated from business school back in Boston in 96. So what is that? 20, 20, oh my God. Don't tell me it's a quarter of a century. Really? Maybe. Um, is the profit factor. Yeah. Uh, I've never seen anything like that. It's nearly eight to one. Uh, to be exact, it's 7.98. Some of you are asking, what does that mean exactly? What it means is that for every dollar that's lost on the trading system, over time, I'm regaining back $7.98. That's right. It's, an, it's, it's really, really, truly remarkable uh, characteristic of the strategy. And this is all current data. Uh, actually, I could have updated it up till like last week. In fact, that, that's another thing I need to do is update that equity curve. Um, if we draw your attention to the middle column of data, what's really impressive, putting all these returns to the side, forget all that, that's great. What's really impressive is the way the system, the tease up system, is able to mitigate risk. So if you look at the last line of data in the middle column, you'll see where it says largest loss, $830. You believe it? Where the largest win is 2200 So it's really the reason that this strategy stands out among all the strategies that are out there, including the institutional space, is because of the losses are minimized to very modest amounts. Um, if you look to the right-hand column of data, most strategies will lose more trades than it wins. And over time, the winning trades overcome the losing trades. This strategy uh, not only wins more trades than it loses, but it wins more trades by a margin of literally four to one. So if you look at the total trades of 151, take note of the winning trades, which is 119, and look at the losing trades. It's only 32 out of the 151. It's amazing. Um, let's draw our attention to this equity curve. Um, when I put this together, now I'm colorblind, but I believe it's blue. Maybe dark blue is the line and light or violet. I can't tell, but you'll see an equity curve. It's an equity curve to die, die for. Um, because it's so smooth. And if you look at the x-axis, you'll see on the x-axis, starting with the trade number one, all the way to trade number 151, right here where my arrow is, or cursor. And if you look at the y-axis, you can see the growth in equity in U.S. dollar terms from 10,000 to 90,000. And one of the things you want to take note at, and when I presented this just eight, what was it, two weeks ago to the Spanish traders from uh, the banks, uh, uh, some of, uh, many of you are online here. Uh, everybody literally had their tongues hanging out of their mouth because of the, what we call a recovery factor. So if we look at, for example, trade number 28, I would say, yeah, maybe 20, yeah, 28. You see that little dip there? That's a drawdown. And then you can see by trade number 31, it recovers. Here's another example here. Let's look at, um, trade number 72. Again, you see a little dip and quickly it recovers. It's one of the, probably the best equity curve I've ever seen in my life actually, professionally. 
So, and then you can, and one of the key things is that the recovery is quite quick too. It doesn't take too many trades to, to uh, uh, overcome that. So, I'm going to be introducing Mr. Joe Duffy now. Uh, I don't want to have any ado. I'll let him explain a little bit about his background, how he got involved, um, and uh, this best part of the webinar. Joseph, are you online? Uh, yep. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. It's all yours, Joe. Okay, bud. Thank you, Linovic. Okay, I'm going to try to be as quick as possible, guys. I know you didn't come to here to listen to me. Um, I've been a prop trainer for one of the largest banks in the world. Uh, I was involved in the hedge fund industry where I was licensed, registered to do all that stuff. Uh, before that, I was involved in some trading contests that you know Paul Jones and all those guys were in. So that's kind of how I got started in the business. So I've been down doing it for a while and um, always on the, the management side. So um, that's it. Uh, next slide, Ludovic. Can I get the next slide, uh, Ludovic, please? Okay. Um, okay. So we've we've got a basic premise that we that we run. I got it. I got it. I see it now. Okay. Um, so we've got a basic uh, algorithmic premise that we run targets on options off of. Uh, there's a bit of an override for me because an experience counts for something, but. Uh, <laughs> Basically, the market's never as simple as A than B. So if you see something that says, oh, green, you buy, red, you sell, uh, it's an oversimplification, and it probably is not going to hold up over the long term. Our basic philosophy is this, and 90% of the time, this is what we use. We establish the trend, whether that trend be up or down, and then you look to, to uh, enter the trade on a retrenchment of the trend. So we never buy breakouts, or almost never. We're always looking to um, position ourselves on our own terms um, during uh, a little bit of a recession in the trend. Uh, Ludovic, next, uh, next chart. Okay. Okay. Yep, yep, that's it. And that's basically what we're talking about here. You can just see. This is a, a simplification, but it's a graphic one of how this, of the strategy works. At the bottom of the screen, you'll see a histogram. And a histogram is that uh, vertical line, red and green. Uh, when it's green, basically, we want to be looking to be long. And when it's red, we want to be looking to be short. But within there, uh, you can see the little uh, triangles. Uh, where those are the dips in the market, where that yellow line dips below the histogram. All right? So those are the times that we will be looking to buy. And that's basically our philosophy. Uh, we don't chase markets going up, but we establish what the trend is and then try to take advantage of the retracements in that trend. So that's, our, that's the basic premise or philosophy that we're using. Uh, about 10%, maybe 5% of the time, we'll, um, we'll look for uh, some sort of reversal in the market, but uh, that's a small... Um, minority of cases. Okay, uh, next slide. Okay, uh, options, if you're not familiar with them, I'll give you a, I'm sure most of you are, but for those of you who aren't, um, try to give you a, a really brief introduction. You may have heard or be familiar with the concept of a real estate option where you have the option, but not the obligation, um, to purchase a certain property for X number of dollars in the next year or two years or however that case may be. Now, you pay whatever, you might pay $10,000 up front, depending on what the property is worth, and if you choose to exercise that option, then there'll be agreed on price of a million dollars or something. If you choose not to, you forego your $10,000 and everybody walks away. It's the same with stock options. An option is the right but not obligation to buy a certain stock or sell a certain stock in the case of put options um, within a certain time and for a certain price. Now, unlike real estate options, the, the option market in stocks is, is quite liquid, so we don't hold things to the date of expiry. Um, there's an act of buying and selling all the time. Okay, uh, so uh, if you're Playing the market to go up, those are called call options. And if you're playing the market to go down, 
they are called put options. A put option basically gives you the right to sell the stock. A call option gives you the right to buy it. Okay, next slide, Ludovic. Yes, just a moment, Joe. Sure. Can you see it, Joe? Yep. yep. Okay. Now, as we talked about with the real estate option, you have a certain time uh, to buy that piece of property. So the $10,000 in that case is basically what you are buying is time. That's what the $10,000 is. You're buying time. Now, it's the same in stock options. Uh, you know, if you have the right to buy XYZ stock for $50, and you pay $2 for the option, and the stock is also exactly $50, then you're paying $2 for the time left in that option. Okay? Now, that's a hard game to win sometimes because you're always paying a premium, always. So what we try to do is take that premium sometimes and use it to our advantage, and we're going to show you how I do that. Uh, it's something called option spreading. Uh, it, it, it's not difficult, but uh, we may have to go through it more than once if you're not familiar with it. It's one of those things where uh, I'm not sure I get this, and then when you get it, you, you say, oh, it's, it's simple. I see now. Okay, uh, next slide, Ludovic. Can you see it? Uh, so, one of the advantages that we have with spreading is we can tilt the risk reward in our favor. I just gave you the the example of an option that we would pay two dollars for uh, to buy that stock at fifty. If we put a spread on, um, we may be able to instead of paying two dollars of pure time value, we may be able to put a spread on where we only pay fifty cents or sometimes even zero. There are, there are opportunities in the market where you can actually pay zero time value uh, for an option spread, which still has the potential uh, for a 100% return. So that is why, in a nutshell, uh, option strategies or option spreads are, in my opinion, vastly superior to uh, outright puts and calls. Uh, next slide, Ludovic. Okay, so within the program, uh, very briefly, you know, you, I would not allocate more than 10%, maybe even 5% per position, depending on how aggressive you want to be. Uh, if you've got a small account, don't put 10 positions on, obviously, at the same time. You know, limit yourself to one or two until you get going. And uh, if you've got a larger account, you can easily handle, you know, three to six positions. So uh, we'll have some sort of graduated scale for that. Uh, you know, as we proceed in the uh, in the program. Okay, uh, next slide, Ludovic. I'm trying to get through this as quickly as I can, guys. Just giving you the the real basics because when we get to the spreads here, it's really this is really what I wanted to talk to you about. So we're going to spend a little bit more time here. Okay. Uh, you can see on the left here where it says action, just buy or sell. Just, just don't worry about that for right now. Uh, what we're going to worry about is the prices. And I just I took a screenshot yesterday uh, from my uh, from my um, you know, order entry system, and and uh, these were the prices. And it, it's what's important here is not the strategy. The it's this. I've only taken this to show you the theory. Uh, this is not a recommendation. This is not anything that I did. It's just to show you the theory. Now, we could buy this 325 uh, put. Now, that gives us the right to sell the S&P, the SPY ETF, for 325 anytime between now and February 14th. So, if, this, if the S&P was to go down to 320 by February 14th, that option would be worth 325, the strike price, minus the current price, $5. Now, if you see over on the right there where it says bid ask, that option right now is bid $5.05, where it was when I took this screenshot, and it was offered at $5.09. Now, if you look at the very, very bottom of the screen where it says underlying, at that time, the index was 324. So, let's go back again. If, if our strike price is 325, 
and the index is 324, and I'm going to ignore the 5 for a sec, that means that that option has an intrinsic value of $1. In other words, if it was expiring today and it closed right there, uh, it would be worth $1, actually 95 cents. But see, we're paying $5.05 for it. So as you can see, there's a $4 time value. $1 of intrinsic value, $4 of time value make up that $5.05. So if we expected, say, that option to make us, not expected, but if, if that option were to make us, say, a 300% gain, it would have to go to $15. Now, for that option to go to fifteen dollars, uh, the strike or the, the the market, the spy market, would have to go three twenty five, which is our strike price, minus fifteen is is uh, three ten. So the market's going to have to drop fourteen S and P points or spy points in order for us to 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 make a, a triple. Now, I'm not suggesting that that is going to happen or would happen, but I'm just using it as an example. Now, here's what we do instead of buying that outright option. Right? We're going to buy the 325 just like we're buying a straight put. And this would be a bearish strategy, okay, uh, if we're buying the put. And what we're going to do instead of just buying the 325, we're going to then sell the 320. So we're long the 325, short the 320. So when we buy something, we pay. So we pay $5.05. When we sell something, we, we receive, obviously. So we're getting $3.43. Okay? So if we use those figures, buy 505, sell 343, it would cost us $1.58. Okay? Now, Ludovic, let's go to the next screen and we'll run through the various scenarios that could happen after we put this spread on. Hopefully. Can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you clearly. Yep. Let me just go. Yep. Okay. Um, so we buy the three twenty five at five dollars and seven cents, sell the three twenty at forty five. The net cost for us is now a dollar sixty two, right? Um, now, what would happen in various scenarios? If the market ends up at three twenty five, well, the 325 put isn't worth anything, and the 320 put isn't worth anything. So anything above 325, and that, that spreads a write-off. Okay? Now, what if the market goes down to 323? Well, the 325 put then, and this is, we're, we're going to assume this is an expiry day, is then worth $2. 325 minus 323 will give it a value of $2. The 320 when this when the when the index is three twenty three is worth zero because nobody wants to um, there's no sense selling the 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 index at at three twenty if it's already three twenty three no one would do that so it, it's got a value of zero now recall on the last chart that the uh, the index when we actually went to initiate this trade was three twenty four so it only has to drop a point. And we make basically, um, uh, you know, 40 cents on the spread. Now, if we have just bought the calls and not sold the 320 calls, just bought the 325s, we would have paid five dollars. And if and if the market finished at 323, well, they would be worth two. So we'd have a loss of three dollars. But on this scenario, we've got a gain of 40 cents. That's a big difference. It really, is, I tell you. Yeah, it's it's a huge difference. Now you you give up a tiny amount of upside for that, and let me just show you how that is. Now let's say the market goes down to three twenty. Now at this point, the three twenty fives, three twenty five versus three twenty, are worth five dollars, and the three twenties are still worth zero. So now your dollar sixty two cost has gone up to five dollars. Okay, so you basically tripled your money. And remember, the current index price was only 324, so it only dropped four points, and you got a triple on that spread. Now, no matter how far below uh, 320 the market goes, the most you're going to make is is buying at 162 and selling at five. If it goes to 315, say, then your 325 is worth 325 minus 315, it's worth 10, 
and your 320, which you have to buy back, is worth 320 minus 315 is five. So your your upside is capped to five dollars. But that's a 300% gain. The market only has to go down four points for you to make that uh, three times your money. Whereas if you just bought the put or the sorry, you just bought the call, as you recall, it would have to have gone down to to 310. So a four point gain on the spread or a four point move in the index on the spread makes us a triple. Now, if we didn't have the spread, it would have had to have gone down a 14 point move for us to get a triple. So you can see you do give a little bit of upside up. Like if, for instance, if we had a monstrous crash, then it would have been better just to have the, uh, the 325 put and that's all. But in almost all cases, you're far better off with the spread. Uh, other advantages of the spread, if the market does go against you, uh, the, your long one and short one, so you're never just losing money, you're making money on one side, but losing a little bit more on the other. So uh, your losses are also mitigated. You have a chance to get out because you have some hedging, you have some protection. Uh, it's not going to be nearly as bad if you just have you know, a naked call or a naked put. The spread will always protect you because you're long one and short one. So, yes, you give up a tiny bit of upside, but you gain a whole lot of uh, potential uh, for, for making more money on reasonable moves, and you gain a whole lot of um, uh, protection if the market goes against you because you're long one and short one, so you're just not going to get drilled on the one that uh, you're on the wrong side of. So that was one of the, some of the trade arguments can trade just tend to go. They love the fact that you give up a slight bit of a type, but you really yourself on the down and you still have a opportunity, especially volatility that we've been since April, June, July, the last base alone. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I, I, I hope I'm explaining this clearly. I, it's one of those concepts that, boy, it, it's, it's, uh, if you're not familiar with it, it may be a bit of a head scratcher, but it becomes familiar very quickly once you've gone through a few examples. So, no, you're doing a job. You're doing a fantastic, not a head scratcher. A lot of uh, okay. Need with some real pod comments here. The, they this the fact okay. Give up a little bit of side, but we put butts on the downs, man. That yep. yeah, if you could, that would be awesome. Yep. So the one I just showed you was called a debit spread because we buy. For five, we're selling for three. We we end up, you know, having to pay a dollars, you know, dollar sixty three or whatever it was. Okay, so we still have to pay out. What I'm going to show you here now is another kind of spread, and this one is a credit spread. So again, on the very left here, you'll see where it says action uh, buy and sell. Just ignore that part. All that we're really interested in here um, is the prices. Okay, so um, this one is on the uh, a gold ETF. Now, in this case, because it's a credit spread, what we're going to do is we're going to buy the less expensive option and we're going to sell uh, the more expensive option and we're going to get a credit. And if you followed me through the last one, that's great. This one is only a tiny bit more sophisticated or, or a tiny bit harder to get your head around sometimes. So we're going to buy a 150 call in GLD for $1.23. And we're going to sell the uh, 147 call uh, for two seventy three. So what we're going to get, as you can see there, if we use those prices, is $1.48. Right. Now, uh, the index right now, if you go, it says underlying at the very bottom of your screen, the GLD index right now, or when I, you know, snapshot or screenshot of this, was uh, 148.92, right? So at that point, the intrinsic value of the 150 call or the time value of the 150 call is zero because uh, no one's going to buy want to buy for 150 when the index is only 148.92. So that dollar 23 that we buy is 100% time value, and the 147 that we sell, it's 273, which is two. Which, which would mean our break-even point would be 149.73 uh, if we were just buying that call, okay? But we're selling it, so um, 
we have, again, a hedged position where we're long something and short something. And this time we're receiving the money. So we receive $1.48. Okay? What we hope in this situation is that both of those options expire worthless. So that would mean, obviously, it, that GLD closes below 150, but it also closes below 147 by February 14th because in that case, both of those options are worth zero. Okay, and we've received a dollar forty-eight. Okay, now it costs us to do this. The difference between one fifty and one forty-seven is three dollars less than say the dollar forty-eight that we receive. So it basically costs us a dollar fifty-two. So we're basically in that scenario risking one to make one. But you'll see that we we are not dealing with a huge time premium here. If we're bearish at all and our analysis is correct and our algorithms have given us the right signal, this thing doesn't have to drop very far at all uh, for us to be profitable. Now, if we go to the next screen, we'll go through the various scenarios of, uh, of what can happen. So, so if I could get the next one, uh, Ludovic. Get to the next. Yep. Yep. Hi, Joe. Yep, that's okay. Yeah. So hopefully see, seeing some of this written out uh, on, the, on the screens is going to be a little bit easier. Let me get a slide. Yep, no, I, I'm all good. Yep. So as you can see, I've got, uh, um, you know, and I've rounded up my numbers here so we can all follow it easily. So we buy that 150 call for a dollar and a quarter, sell that 147 call for 275. So we get a credit at a dollar fifty. Now, as I said, if it goes below 147, Everybody wins. We we keep our dollar fifty, and uh, and uh, you know it's all good, right? Uh, at one forty eight and a half, which is slightly below uh, where the market is now, we would have to buy that um, one forty seven back. It would be worth a dollar and a half at one forty eight and a half. The difference between one forty eight and a half and one forty seven is a dollar and a half. We would have to buy that one back that we were short for a dollar and a half. The 150 would be worth zero, so basically we're we're breaking even. Okay. Now, if the market goes above 150 or it goes to 155 or 160, it really doesn't matter how high it goes. We're going to lose a dollar fifty. All right, because we're going to have to buy one for um, three dollars more than the other one, but we've already received a dollar and a half, so our net loss will be a dollar and a half. Okay. Now, why would we do that? It's only a one-to-one -one risk reward. Well, because we we have an algorithm that we think is going to is telling us that gold's going down. Uh, gold right there is uh, 148.90. Uh, our break-even point is 148.50. So, you, you know, with at, at this writing almost three weeks to expiry, we are only paying 42 cents of, of premium, right? If our break-even point is 148 and a half. And the current price is 148.92. We're only paying away 42 cents of time value. So for the three weeks that we have to see if this trade works out, it's only costing us 42 cents of time value. Versus buying a put or a call, uh, you're going to be paying, you know, two dollars of time value, probably four times as much. So it's, it's very much the same principle as we had with the debit spread uh, just previously. And that principle is you want to turn time around to work for you because that's the biggest problem with options is uh, the time value and the time decay that they have. So uh, what we want to do is mitigate that factor as much as possible. And by using uh, the correct strategies, uh, we can very, very, very largely mitigate that factor and very, very minorly um, limit our upside while doing it. So it's a it's a very good strategy. Uh, and Joe, I think this academic tale of a way you have this, uh, particularly I mean fourth as well, well rest. Oh uh, yeah, I mean yeah, it it does keep us yeah. Put it that way. Yeah. What about running time. I want to go over the next. It's with you. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I was done with that, so it's perfect. Yeah, but I wanted to spend the most time on on the options because or on the spreads because that's really what. Yeah, definitely appreciate. It. Yeah. Okay. Uh, really briefly here, we talked about the algo we use. Uh, 
it's a mathematically defined methodology. And I said, there's a little bit of overlay sometimes, but the computer spits out the signals and then I decide what we're going to do. Uh, it trades about 64 to 70 uh, stocks and ETFs. Uh, if we run this testing back to 1980 on the S&P 500, that's 500 stocks times 220 trading days comes 40 years of data. Uh, that's almost four and a half million data points. Uh, you know, as we said in the disclaimer at the beginning, nobody can promise anybody anything in this business. There is nothing ever for sure. However, you know, you can draw your own conclusions on the statistical significance of, of, of what's going on there. And it's really important, too, that the algorithm runs exactly the same on all stocks. Uh, anybody can make an algorithm that runs on the S&P 500. Uh, you just make enough rules to to fit the the data, and there you and then bingo bangle. But when you have to do the exact same rules on 500 stocks, and it still works, that's a whole different ballgame. And that's yeah. Okay, is there any more slides, or I'm not sure that there is. There is. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. So we we combined you know uh, the strategies we talked about with what the algorithm is spitting out for uh, you know which way we think the market's going to move. And that's how we decide what we're going to trade. Now, as well as doing the alerts, um, every day, and this helps me as well as you guys, I will send out a video um, saying, you know, what we think of the market here. Uh, here's why I think this. Here's what I do. And in that video, I will also give some uh, ETF, uh, not option trades, but just ETF trades. Some of them are leveraged ETF trades. Um, so... Those are ones that you can choose to do on your own, or you can just, uh, you know, uh, listen for the logic of what I think is going to happen here and, and, and what I'm thinking. So, and I think we're four and zero in January on those trades. By the way, on those ETFs, well, I just started putting the actual actual uh, stock and ETFs in uh, the beginning of this year instead of just talking about. You know, the, the trades we were doing, I started saying, hey, why don't I put some others in for people who want to trade their own ETFs or their own, their own, you know, IRAs or whatever. Absolutely. Fantastic. Ford, what a great. Yeah. Yeah. Good job, Joe. Um, uh, yep. Chris, we get some questions because we didn't drop. <laughs> Those kind of calls. Hey, what am I getting? Um, you're going to get direct alerts uh, to your email or your cell phone. Uh, there's going to be a daily market position recap that will be done every day at the end of the market. Is that correct, Joe? And uh, he'll be going over what the activities were. It's not a long thing. It might be, what, five, six, seven, maybe eight minutes, I think, is the longest one I've seen so far. Uh, the other thing, too, is that you will have direct access to Joe for any kind of educational uh, questions that you might have regarding the market, the methodology, and what he just described, whether it's a credit, debit, or even a diagonal spread. The education on the methodology will describe all the entry rules, uh, also the exit rules, and then also how Joe Duffy trades the option on the stock. Uh, the daily video commentary regarding the markets, uh, his outlook, and he'll also go over the specific trades that we're all in. And You'll also have some access to third-party registered brokers. It's just an option. Uh, I would say about mm, maybe 60% of our uh, subscribers and users uh, elect this option. Uh, it's basically for individuals that don't have a lot of time. Uh, they don't want to be distracted while they're installing a stent in your left aorta, uh, doing a trade. So it's done uh, with the help of what they call an assistance with the broker, and it helps you with your time management. Um, and it's all self-traders and signal alerts. Um, I just want to just uh, recap. We're basically at the end of this webinar. Uh, currently, all the subscriptions have been subscribed to fully. We did that last month. Uh, that's basically the bad news, but most of you are already subscribers. Uh, there is a little good news, possibly, uh, because market conditions can be extremely volatile and different geopolitical uh, issues that we have to deal with around the globe. I've actually had a couple of calls from uh, some uh, uh, fairly wealthy uh, Chinese um, uh, traders that uh, run public companies, and they're bleeding right now. They're going through a crisis. In fact, one of them 
uh, uh, asked to pause his trading because he's bleeding on the other side with his company that's public on the exchange. So that'll free up like $10 million worth of volume. So you never know. Call the office right away, at least to get your name on a list, because if we do have an opening, uh, that volume we can use to do subscribers, or if you have any industry friends that are, you know, colleagues that you work with that wasn't able to get in uh, last year, which was just, what, uh, 20 days ago or 25 days ago, there's a possibility that we could accommodate them. Uh, so please call today just to see what's available. And also there are other strategies that may be more appropriate or suitable to you, uh, given the amount of capital that you're trading with. Um, again, I just want to thank everybody for your attendance. Uh, the, the next slide you'll see our toll free number works all over the world so call us or email us uh, get in contact with your FFR trading uh, consultant so that they can get you on the list and uh, that's it thank you for listening and keep in mind also call the office make sure you're on that list for the uh, uh, reunion for the trader summit that will be held probably in the last week of August in Madrid. thank you very much for listening thank you Joe Hi, everyone. I'm going to post that information one more time. You can see the email there is support at FFRtrading.com, or you can call 1-800-883-0524, or just visit the website. And obviously, the contact link is pretty easy to find. If you have any questions that weren't answered here, just email them, and they will get addressed in the email. So I want to thank you all for coming out. We know that time is that precious commodity that they're not out there trading on the internet. There's just not enough of it, but we do appreciate you spending some of yours here with us tonight. Joe, thank you. Ludovic, thank you. Michael, Matthew, and Bruce, very nice to see you all. Hope we see you again. Best of luck out there trading. I'm going to post that information for everybody one more time. Good night now. Very welcome.